Okay, so um, we have only one student with us, so we'll proceed with the class. So last class, can you remind me, Abdinur, what did we learn? Uh, the last class we have been learning uh, airport and airline, uh, airline uh, and airport structures. Uh, the structures of uh, airline, uh, the last chapter was chapter two. Uh, there are four or five structures of airline, top level management, middle level management teams, other staff is also there is ground staff and some other staff. Uh, also airport organization structure, something that is also divided into two, two or four categories. So that's it. Perfect. So last class we learned about the airport structures and we also said that we also saw the, the link between airports and airlines and we also discussed about the interdependence between the airports and the airlines before that we learned about just uh, the introduction towards the uh, towards the aviation industry how you know uh, the aviation industry really um, you know it, it bloomed over the years or it boomed over the years and we set the perspective by discussing a little bit of history and then we moved on towards airline and airports uh, the the inter uh, you know connection between them and then we spoke about the structure the organization structure today we are going to learn about a very interesting part of of course the airlines industry and we're going to see about how um, you know uh, significantly the airport industry has you know really been able to make a mark over the years and how it has really established. What is the role of airport operator in the airline, uh, in the in the airport industry? What is the role and how they have really strategized their way into making a mark? And which is the governing body at the international level which governs or regulates all the airports in the world as well as the airlines? I'm sure you've heard of IATA and IATA, as you call it. So that is a governing body. And today we are going to learn about all these aspects. And we are going to specially delve into airports operations. Having this at the perspective, let us move on to our slides. Now, airports operations, of course, during the course of the slide, during the course of this class, the lecture, and as we're going through the slides, you're going to really, uh, you know, it's going to come to your mind how the airports industry, the aviation industry, how it has really developed over the years and to what stage we are hearing. Before we move further, you're also aware about COVID-19 pandemic and how it hit the, you know, it hit the globe and how the aviation industry was the worst hit industry. I mean, of course, every other sector was hit. However, the aviation industry, because you know the air traffic, the passengers reduced to nearly 40% as per the recent statistic, 40 to 50% according to the recent statistics, and even how it really, the, the economy took a blow and how it really hit the entire economy as well as a result of aviation industry, because the, what happened uh, when the aviation industry was hit, even the government revenue from the aviation industry reduced. So, so that's another factor that we uh, you know we should really look into, especially in you know in contemporary times with respect to the COVID pandemic. And now at present, 2022, as of today, how the you know the sector is trying to match up, and it's coming back to normalcy. But yet, as for the recent uh, uh, you know research and as for the recent survey, rather they are yet not been able to come up to that particular billion mark of revenue where they actually were earning earlier before the pandemic actually hit. Now, talking about aviation operations, 
we know that last class we learned about the structure of the industry that means we learned about how there is the you know how there is management and how there is the uh, you know the operators airport operators and there is airport management and of course it comprises of personnel it, co it comprises of people who is there at the management level people who is the operate of course people so the industry is obviously it is um you know run by people now due to the pandemic what happened was i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm sure you know that there was a lot of uh, cost cutting in terms of laying off of employees they started laying off additional workforce or they started you know cutting out employees to just to cut out their expenses and they started uh, uh, you know um, trying to uh, thrust upon the remaining employees additional tasks for example if you have a legal manager for example so the legal manager is you know the position is laid off and they would say that okay we will now depend upon an external legal agency as and when it is required just for example or they would say that okay the legal manager and one person under him or her would suffice. So let us remove the other, say the legal assistance and so on. So let us just cut off that part. That's one example. Apart from that is uh, things that really uh, was really happening and was really seen across the aviation industry or what we really witnessed was where the, you know, some of the technicians were removed and supervisors were retained. You see, the technicians were removed and the supervisors were retained. And in some other department, the supervisors were really removed and the technicians were promoted to supervisors. And in some other department, engineers were retained and the supervisors were removed. So they, they were engineers and the technicians. And now there is no supervisor in between. So this was all a, there was a, a cost cutting kind of a campaign in the aviation industry in fact across every sector there was cross cutting but since we are talking about the aviation industry i'm trying to you know point out even about the the recent trend that was uh, really you know uh, it was really seen across you know most of the airports and I being in the aviation industry, I know like how, for example, if I give an example of United Arab Emirates, um, Emirates Airlines uh, now had strategized, it did not really lay off employees, but it had a strategy of, uh, you know, where there were people who were due to retire uh, after say three years. So they said, okay, no, it's better you try to take a kind of an earlier retirement. On the other hand, there is Etihad Airways. There was a number of uh, cost-cutting uh, programs in terms of, uh, you know, terminating employees, and that was again within the ambit of law, within the law, and within the, uh, you know, the the regulations that were provided by the regulatory bodies. Now, apart from that, again, yet another thing in the light of COVID nineteen pandemic, there was yet another uh, uh, you know uh, development during those days now that points out to the importance of regulatory bodies in the aviation industry like the IATA IATA you know uh, like for example uh, you know if you see the airports they, they they equip themselves with all sorts of uh, uh, you know uh, they came up with new equipments with really measured body temperature and like every in every nook and corner there was this sanitization uh you know sanitizers kept everywhere and if when you used to travel by aircraft even to i mean the recent travel that i really engaged in so uh, you know they gave us um you know um sanitizers and uh, certain napkins in, in a pouch you see so these were some of the efforts which were taken and which are till today taken probably it is changing in the days to come um you know uh, in the best interest of safety of passengers so that they do not contract covid 19 due to the air travel so the the aviation industry geared up 
to, a, to the pandemic and said, okay, we have to take safety measures. So imagine if there is no regulatory body, what would be the condition? So thereby, this points out towards the need and also to us the significant role that is played by the regulatory body in the aviation industry. And at the international level, we have got the IATA IATA, and that is the regulatory body which regulates airports as well as airlines across the globe where they have given certain you know, um, regulations which needs to be um, abided by or which needs to be followed and these airports and airlines have to compulsorily work in conformity with those particular regulations. Now let us go through our slides. Of course, we are talking about the airport operations. This also is a very simple chapter, airports operation, how the airports really operate, what are the things that uh, you know, really put the wheels of the airport into motion. So the most complex task, I'm sure you would agree with me, in the aviation industry is airport operations. If there is no operations, then who is going to, and how is it going to really operate? And if there is no operations personnel, who is going to really do the actual job? So let us see what are the factors involved in this operation. So the most complex task in the aviation industry is airport operations, which entails overseeing the smooth operations of the aerodrome. That means they have to see, oversee that the, the aerodrome, it functions smoothly, it operates smoothly, not just the aerodrome, but also the extended facilities of the aerodrome, maintenance towers, control tower, and the other allied part uh, from, you know, including the flight runways, takeoff, and the landing base. So an airport, it, depending upon the size of the airport, it consists of various facilities depending upon what type of airport it is whether it's a dom domestic terminal or whether it is an international terminal or it is you know a regional terminal or just it is a small terminal or what type whether it's just a military base whether it's just for government personnel or a, what do you call it executive airport or with, whether it is just for the the normal civilians or you know the 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 general public so what type of airport it is depending upon depending upon that the operations differ. So an airport therefore, depending upon its size, it consists or the type, it consists of snack bars, coffee shops, restaurants, of course, lounges, several terminals, different terminals, depending upon how huge the airport is. Sometimes it happens, uh, you know, really huge airlines or giant airlines, they secure things for themselves a distinct or a demarcated terminal just for themselves, apart from the other general terminals. For example, in Dubai, we have a separate terminal for Emirates Airlines, and the other airlines have, you know, say terminal one and two is for that, and terminal three is entirely for Emirates Airlines. Likewise, even in Etihad, in Abu Dhabi, uh, we have a separate terminal for, um, you know, Etihad Air Airlines, and then there are other, you know, terminals for the other international, um, um, international airlines. So it, it depends up, It depends upon whether the airport has got several terminals. Then you have got taxi bridge, taxiway bridges, airport security hubs, airfield vehicles such as baggage carriers, uh, then, you know, passenger carriers from the airport to the stationed aircraft for boarding. Um, I'm sure you have seen, uh, since you belong to the airport industry, you know how it really operates. You have, uh, depends upon how they're connecting the flight, whether it is uh, really they're connecting to and through from the airport to the craft or they are, they, they, the, air, the, uh, the aircraft is parked at a particular place and you know the passengers are taken um, uh, by a mini bus to the particular aircraft. So the passenger carriers from the airport to the stationed aircraft for boarding or common use paved areas so all these come within the uh, the the you know the the range of the airport the regular and all these things uh, come within the ambit of uh, 
you know, airport operations. So the airport operator has to take care of all these things, be it, you know, the contracts with snack bars, coffee shops, restaurants, lounges, several terminals, to whom the terminal, whether it is an, a distinct terminal or taxiway bridges, airport security hubs, whether they have a separate contract with the airport security or they have the airport operator employs its own personnel as security. It, again, it depends on airfield vehicles such as baggage carriers, passenger carriers, they might contract the services of, you know, another, uh, you know, maybe some other company to perform this uh, task for them. Then they have to regularly maintain field lighting you see, and visual across slope indicators in a safe and operable condition. And always maintain airfield signage in a safe and operable condition, and so on. So these are some of the things that an uh, airport has. Now, maintenance is a continuous process and not a one-time task, of course. So overall operation is a series of Herculean tasks, kind of a humongous task which cannot be really performed by one person or just a small group of people. It needs certain professionals as well as people who are trained in a particular area to carry on with the operations. And sometimes in small domestic airports, there is a possibility where there may be a group of people who may multitask and do, you know, uh, like, for example, for example, uh, you see a small airport or say an airlines for example a small airlines will just have a legal manager i know about the legal department so maybe it will just have a legal manager and the legal team whereas a you know a huge airline because of the type of work that comes in and the the you know the depth of work that is there so they might have a you know a distinct legal manager for say there would be a legal manager air side legal manager for just employment legal manager for some other you know different uh, uh they might give them different um you know portfolios to handle so likewise so now here it is a, it is a herculean task it is a difficult task and therefore depending upon that they would have that many number of employees apart from that it involves inspection it involves its, its maintenance as well as inspection. So now who is responsible for the inspection of the airport? The, air, the operator is also called, maybe he may be a sponsor, the airport sponsor or the operator is expected to inspect the area and the facilities at regular intervals. That means regularly inspection schedules may be prepared and to assure that all the facilities are well maintained and serve the passengers adequately, thus providing them a seamless travel experience. So that means maintenance is a must and it has to be carried on, you know, on a regular basis. Now, as mentioned in the earlier chapters, airport operations, again, are distinct from management. We said that there is a possibility that airports operator may be different from the management, and there is a different agreement to that extent. Airport operators may also be referred to as airport sponsors and may employ or contract the services of the additional sub operators to perform various tasks to ensure smooth operations within the ambit of law and in strict compliance and conformance with relevant rules legislation and aviation guidelines. So the main airport con operator contracts with the federal regulatory body or a governmental regulatory body and that will reflect the ex the contract will reflect the extent of obligation that the airport operator has or on the part of the operator and is what is the extent of the tasks or that is thrust upon or what is expected to be carried out by the airport operator, whether it is just maintain airport facilities in a safe and serviceable condition or something more. However, the, it is the airport operator who is normally thrust with the responsibility to maintain airport facilities in a safe and a serviceable condition. So the main or the primary aim or the chief aim of all regulation is safety safety of the terminal, safety of the airport, safety of the passengers, and safety of the personnel within the airport, and elimination of all risks and hazards to passengers and airport personnel. So therefore, investment in security is a mandatory investment, such as 
installation of security equipment, body scanners, facial recognition machines, deploying security personnel, etc. So on. Though it may be, you know, it, 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 they have to incur certain costs, and sometimes the costs may e escalate. But yet, it is a mandatory security is a mandatory investment. Uh, for smooth operations of the airport. So airport operations can be classified into four groups. One is ground operations. Practically, I'm sure you know that. Ground operations, airside operations, billing and invoice, and information management systems. Along with information management systems, I've also team, I'm, I added another thing in the subsequent slides that is, you know, quality assurance mechanism or quality assurance systems. QAS and IMS. What is ground operations? I'm sure you know that because you're from that field. So ground operation includes extensively terminal operations, including parking zones and all activities of the aircraft in the aerodrome, including its movement within the aerodrome. So again, I'm repeating, it includes parking zone. It includes all terminal operations, including parking zones and all activities of the aircraft in the aerodrome, including the movement within the aerodrome. But they say it need not uh, you know, include the takeoff and landing, but it does include the movement of the airport with uh, the, the sorry, movement of the aircraft within the aerodrome. Now, effective ground operation ensures safety of passengers. And I, as I said earlier, safety is you know, at the, uh, the, the, the top priority of the aviation industry, safety is like, it, it, is a man, it is a mandate. It is the highest mandate in the aviation sector. So effective ground operations ensures safety of passengers and all people in the terminal by implementing strict vigilance and security measures. Now these security operations may be carried out by the main airport operator or the main airport operator may contract the services of a sub operator or in the alternator may contract the services exclusively with a security organization under mutually agreed terms and conditions. So the main airport operator has the duty to maintain last class I remember we, we learned about the agreement which binds airport operator and the airports management so just a gentle reminder about that and we are linking that with this now so the main airport operator has the duty to maintain and see to the safety of the airport halls the surrounding areas maintain internal pathways and roads within the airport within the presence or within the purview or the ambit of the airport property. Now, what is air side operations? Again, what is air side operations? Now, air side operations can be bifurcated into ground crew and air traffic control, ATC. Again, I'm repeating, air side operations can be bifurcated into ground crew and ATC, that is air traffic control. So the ground crew, what is the role of the ground crew? The ground crew sees to the landing area. They are the ones who are responsible for directly for directing the vehicles such as baggage carriers and airfield passenger minibuses and the other allied functions pertaining to swift redressal of airside complaints to respond to airfield accidents or small minor accident, accidents that may take place there or emergencies or even incidents, checks, runways for foreign objects. Uh, normally, there is a system that is installed, a software that is normally installed called the FOD, that is a foreign object detect detector, which is normally set up and main that, you know, maintains uh, kinds of, it gives an indication in case there is a foreign object in the runway. Now, apart from that, of course, it sets up and maintains safety warnings such as no times. No times it is notice to airmen and they make provisions and processes the process clearance for aircraft parking ensuring safe parking and docking of aircraft etc so this is basically the rule of uh, the role of ground crew apart from that is air traffic control atc now that comprises of control towers and air traffic controllers who are primarily responsible for air spaces, safety management, and controlling air traffic. So they need to assess ATM, that is the air traffic management, that is a capability, and ensuring that it aligns with ground operational movements.
Now, thereby, ATC, that is the air traffic control, uh, it coordinates with the pilots and it the passes critical information such as weather conditions for an object detection. Uh, you must have heard of several, uh, you know, some accidents that might have taken place on the runway. For example, a bird has hit the 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 the, the aircraft, the you know the the screen of the aircraft, and so on. So you know certain critical information such as weather conditions for an object detection runway runway clearance runway usage road change it, it if any a proposed the flight that is with regards to the flight weather conditions takeoff and landing permission so this is normally the role of the atc they ensure that the aircrafts are not involved in collisions with other aircraft so they give them a signal of saying that yes you can move you can fly or you can wait before you know sometimes you see sometimes um when you board a flight and uh, i mean boarding is done and the flight is ready to take off but the flight you know keeps the the aircraft keeps moving around the 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 runway until it gets its signal and until it gets its permission so who does it air traffic control atc atc has to give its go so air said operations therefore implies the direct supervision of the airfield and airspace yet another factor is billing and invoice that is of course which involves um cash flow inflow and outflow billing and invoice pertaining to aeronautical and non aeronautical revenue with the help of advanced accounting systems to handle invoices they have advanced accounting systems in place to handle invoices flight bills cash inflow and outflow sales within the airport staff expenditure in terms of their salaries atc that is air traffic control charges may be endeavored to be kept minimal within norms uh, just in case we dis I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, just in case we get disconnected, please join back. Next is Information Management System, IMS, and Quality Assurance Systems, QAS. The use of Information Management System, of course, it's become quite common these days in the corporate sector. Now, that cannot, of course, the aviation industry cannot be kept away from that. So there is the use of IMS, that is Information Management System, in the aviation sector as well, in the airports to track flight timelines and, to, and and schedules in terms of flight arrivals and departures. For that purpose, we use IMS systems, information management systems. Aircraft handling or ground service provision may be handled by contractors and subcontractors and may not always be by aircraft operators, direct recruits. It need not be necessarily by their own recruits or by the employees or, you know, who are under their employment agreements. So such an arrangement would necessitate the establishment and working through a QAS, that is quality assurance system, to ensure best safety standards. Because now airports operator is not in a position to exercise complete control over some other staff members who are not their direct recruits. So they might contract the services. So who is held responsible for that is that particular agency or that particular contractor under whose employment contract those recruits are, those uh, personnel are. So therefore, they they have a system called as QAS, that is Quality Assurance System, uh, which normally you know tries to check how it is operating, how the personnel and how the team they are actually uh, you know uh, maintaining a particular quality and you know rendering their services as per the QAS standards or as per the best safety standards that is required to be complied with by the aviation industry and by the airport. So the aviation industry, of course, is regulated by laws, by legislations, by uh, a regulatory body. And at the international level, there is a cartel, a group that's called, or an international association, call it as a cartel. It's like in, in business management, I'm sure you have studied about pools, about cartels. So IATA, IATA is a cartel. So it is an international association of world's airlines founded in 19. 19- 45. The focus area of IATA is, IATA is safety, safety in aviation services, safety of flight, safety of passengers, and the main instrument for safety is the I, IATA Operational Safety Audit, IOSA, and in June 2014-2014, the IATA set up a special panel to study and track aircraft in flight in real time. The why this was done is because it was in response to the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 on March 
8, 2014, which actually disappeared and nobody knew like what happened to it. So ARTA, therefore, it came up with a special panel to study and track aircrafts in flight in real time. ARTA also identifies and develops operational solutions either on ground or in flight for all areas affecting aircraft and airlines. So therefore, it is a regulatory body which you know really governs aircraft as uh, sorry airlines as well as airports. So ARTA therefore plays a pivotal role and governs through its guidelines its regulations, both airport and airspace airlines, the, uh, including airspace planning and development projects across the globe to match airline requirements of safety, efficiency, and operations. Next is, it has recently envisaged a, a global infrastructural infrastructure strategy. It has recently come up with global infrastructure strategy that will address high level long-term planning and short-term matters along with regional development. Thereby, it has strategized to implement environmental goals further in rendering guidelines to the airport sector, which is both effective and efficient. So that is all for airport operations, how airport operations are actually carried out and who, who, the the three bodies which are there or 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 rather the the four uh, uh you know groups which are there that is ground operations air side operations billing and invoicing and ims along with qas so this is all about it let, uh, let me know if you have any questions This is something practical. Airport operations is regulated. It is regulated by local legislations. In a sense, they have the federal legislations as well as at the international level, we have the IATA. So all the operations must be performed within the ambit of the law or in consonance and in compliance with the law, the relevant legislation and the regulations. Like I gave you an example, when there was a COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, they came up with guidelines. Aviation industry came up with guidelines. IATA came up with guidelines, saying that every airport and every airline has to follow this particular protocol, COVID protocol. So for example, you know, there should be sanitizers every day. There should be, uh, you know, carrying a particular, uh, you know, test reports. In those days, when it was at its peak, when people were really running hither to the, from if they are scattered abroad, they're going back home. So they were scared, they were going back home those days. So they had a particular guidelines, aviation guidelines, and there was a mandate where everyone who was uh, air passenger had to really come up with this uh, COVID test of 24 hours. And then after going to the air airport, they would again test there. Again, when you take a flight and you reach your home country, again, there is a test there. Again, there was, uh, you know, you had to pay some amount. I mean, it was a lot of things which just happened in those days. And by God's grace, we are now free of all that. But of course, still now, certain guidelines are still in place. That is, some countries, when you travel to certain countries, uh, they have a particular mandate where you will have to give at least, uh, you know, a report or uh, your your COVID-19 test report should be not less than 14 days old. Some of them say like, no, it should be at least 72 hours before flying. You'll have, you know, you'll have to produce a report which is at least 72 hours before flying. So that means then only then they will say okay to board. You see, so these are some of the guidelines depending upon the countries, uh, country to country, jurisdiction to jurisdiction, how the pandemic had really hit and like how it was actually handled across the globe. What is the situation in every country depending upon that? So there were certain guidelines which had to be complied with. And of course, IATA guidelines have to be complied. And along with that, there will be certain laws and uh, you know, legislations of a particular country, federal level, or even at a particular domestic level, depending on what are, what is required in that particular place. So there are certain rules to be followed. So it's mandatory for the airports and the airlines to comply in the pursuit of the operations, several laws that are there, relevant laws, regulations, and also the IATA guidelines. Do you have any questions? Okay, your attendance. 
No more, Lord. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. So your attendance and a gentle reminder about your assignment. Um, assignment submission, I'm just repeating, reiterating, assignment submissions have to be on time. Assignment submission has to be via Google Classroom only just to ensure transparency between the university, the teacher, and the student. So uh, it has to be via Google Classroom. Please, 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 three times I've said please. I request you to go through the instructions before you submit and just don't submit your assignments in a hurry. You still got time. If you want to just withdraw it and resubmit, you can do that. Comply with that instructions, which is there. For example, like the word limit, alignment of the text, material, plagiarism is forbidden. It will not be encouraged. There'd be deduction of marks for plagiarism that is cut, copy, paste directly from some other resource and material and so on. And uh, if you're uh, taking it from somewhere, put it in inverted commas, quote to the person. And ideally what we want to understand is that you know the subject. So in that, on those lines, you prepare your assignment and submit it on time per day of default of, for late submission, it's minus one marks or deduction of one mark. Again, I'm repeating, Upload your assignments on Google Classroom only. Please refrain from sending me any emails or even WhatsApp, even sending your documents by WhatsApp because that is the procedure. You'll have to upload it. So thank you so 